technologies, which does attempt to um, put things on a level playing field. And uh, that methodology was adopted via a public process, and it's you know it's pretty comprehensive. Um, and we did apply it in the context of our self-generation incentive program, uh, which looked and so it looked at CHP uh, variety of technologies there as well as wind. Um, and uh, did it look at in conduit hydro? It didn't look at in conduit hydro, um, but it could. But the same framework could be applied. And we also are applying it to the solar program. So there will be some level playing field analysis of the costs and benefits of various technologies across that. And that builds on some work that the Energy Commission had done a few years ago. But anyway, so that's available on the PUC website. If you're interested, let me know. Well, I would like to say we have to always look at benefits and impacts. Yeah. And just as an example, if uh, we took all the land that's available in California and grow biomass for generating chemicals and energy, it would have a huge impact on the prices of agricultural products, <laughs> right? And so you have to project to a certain extent what the, those kind of costs are going to be. Likewise with the environment. If you look at the nuclear industry, th some of the things haven't, you know, we realize haven't been thought through in terms of what would be the impact of a disaster. Mm -hmm. So. So we have to often act on data we, we don't have, but some thoughtful consideration of all possible costs is always beneficial, I think. David. Anyone else? <coughs> Everything that needs to be said probably has been said already, but that won't stop me from saying something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, w one, of the, one of the things that's difficult with optimization problems <coughs> is um, how do you get there and when do you know you're there? Um, and the last one is probably the most difficult one because there is a tendency to want to keep optimizing. Um, in addition to this, trying to optimize each, let's call them energy streams, is difficult enough. Uh, the cross correlation, uh, as you try to integrate them, as, as some of the panelists have said, is even more difficult. And so what that means is that in the optimization process, if you want to call it that, uh, there's going to be iterations. So we're not going to get there uh, we're not going to find a solution just like that. We're going to try things, some things are not going to work. And, and so we need to optimize the optimization process. We need to find a way to minimize the number of iterations that we're going to have to do to reach an acceptable goal. And, and that's probably the key also. You know, what is it that we're going to accept as, you know, yes, we, we are where we need to be and, and then define a new goal. Well, <coughs> one more thing. I'm, an, I'm a chemical engineer. And with uh, chemical engineering, when you have a very complex problem with multiple variables, multiple inputs, there is no such thing as a single solution. It's a, these are open-ended problems, which have, there are many uh, optima, uh, let's say, with different consequences. So we have to be aware of that. You cannot say there's only one solution, there's not. Did I miss anyone? Thank you. I'm going to forego my second question and open it up to the audience. Um, Come up to the microphone and introduce yourself. Thank you. Well, I'm asking geothermal, but my question here is about solar. Uh, the, the CPUC and the Solar Collaborative getting together on what data ought to be taken from the solar initiative and, and getting that out into the public so it can be used to evaluate this and to. Uh, advance it forward and to see how costs are getting reduced? Maybe I'll take the first shot on that. So um, as part of the solar, California Solar Initiative, we've set aside a, um, a significant amount of funds for uh, evaluation of the program. All of the work that comes out of our evaluation program is public. Um, we collect an enormous amount of performance data, the largest uh, assemblage of solar system performance data um, that I'm aware of. Um, and we analyze that and make all the results public. So I'm not sure, uh, and I would love to share with you if you're interested in, there's a whole variety of studies that we do on the, on the impact of the solar program, and, and uh, I'm not sure if you're interested in something in particular. Well, are, are the people that are benefiting from the uh, payments required to give data, yes. are the manufacturers required to give data, and has the collaborative who's evaluating some of the data had a hand in in drafting the RFPs or, you know, the solicitations so that you're asking for the data when you do each round of procurement. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for the, you mean for the RD&D grants or for the regular rebate program? 
I'm, I don't know enough to ask, okay. distinguish, but well, I was thinking of the, the, the California Solar Initiative. Well, for the, for the regular rebate program, uh, all large systems are required to give us their performance data. And so we have a collection of what we call 8760 data on 15 minute intervals of the actual solar production of hundreds of megawatts of solar that's installed in California. And then I've never worked with a particular person from the California Solar Energy Collaborative, but if, if one of them was interested in using that performance data, then they would contact us and we would either build it into our existing research plan and just provide them the results or we would work with them to get them the data. But they could advise on each round of procurement, I'm thinking. Uh, okay, so in terms of the, procur the procurement for the RD and D grants, is that what uh, you're asking? I saw you, you mentioned round three. Yeah, right, 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 okay. Yeah. So in terms of, yes, in fact, there's a variety of people, many people, uh, a lot of people have been involved in advising us on which grants to select. Um, and some of the people in that collaborative have received our grants. Mm -hmm. So they, they're conflicted if they're receiving a grant, but, but many other people aren't conflicted, if that makes sense. I think they're more interested in getting the money than advising me on how to spend it. I, I wanted to make sure that they're required to give you the data that, that the uh, evaluators yeah. would like to have yeah, in the, order to do and the anyone, reports. And anyone who participates in a grant program funded by either the California Public Utilities Commission, similar rules under the Energy Commission, you know, basically their work products have a public uh, component. I, I probably am lacking the vocabulary to, at this exact moment to tell you, but basically their work products become the public domain. Uh, with certain caveats, blah, blah, blah. The lawyers are all over this stuff. But, <laughs> but yeah, if you're interested in the rd and go to calsolarresearch.ca.gov, and if you want to see data, uh, see me about finding the CPUC CSI website. And I am welcome, you know, research uh, agenda ideas from anyone in the collaborative of the audience. Uh, we are not involved in that in the moment, or we are interested. We